Yeah, bring them now. Don't wait. Don't wait till they can make up their minds for themselves. No, you make up their minds. That's why then God put you in their life. You can, they don't have no mind good enough to make. I wish I had a with them. They ain't experienced enough to make good decisions in every aspect. Some decisions I need to make. Are y'all praying with me? Amen, amen. There is an urgency because the enemy starts early. Are y'all praying with me? But God wants us to participate with the deliverance of our children. If our children are going to be delivered, mama, daddy, grandmama, auntie, uncle, whoever you are, mentor, worker in the church, we need to participate in their deliverance. Are you praying with me? The Bible says that the man said, I took him to your disciples and they couldn't do nothing with him. Jesus said, bring him to me. There is interdependency and there is urgency. But finally, lest I keep you too long, verse 23. Um, Jesus also says, if you can believe, all things are possible. Amen. If you can believe. Are y'all praying with me? Amen. Amen. Uh, and the scripture says that that the man, Jesus' is, Jesus is response to the man uh, was because he had something to say. Can you, hear what the, you see what the Father says? In verse 23, he says, if you can, I took him to your disciples. He's got this self-destructive behavior. He's deaf. Uh, he's dumb. He can't communicate. He can't listen. He won't listen. Come on, somebody. All right. And, and that's, that's, that's something that's, that's, that's dealing with a lot of our people, especially our young people. They won't listen. No matter how many times or how many different ways you try to explain it, they won't listen. And then, and then they can't communicate. Amen, amen. One of the things that the, the Boys to Men ministry program at Pleasant Green is doing is they're going to be talking to boys about how to apply for a job. All right. And in the application process, you have to give an interview. All right. And when you interview for the job, you have to be able to listen All right. and communicate. Yes, sir. And, if, and if, the, if, the, if the person giving the interview sees you can't listen because you ain't even answering the questions they ask, right. and then you can't communicate, you can't speak, Come on, somebody. Right. And how you gonna get a job? Right. Who wanna marry you? You can't listen. Yes, sir. And you can't communicate. I'm talking to somebody in here right now. Brothers, you can't communicate. In other words, in other words, you ought to know what I think. I, you ought to just leave me alone. I, 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 you ought to understand me by now. How can we understand you and you ain't saying nothing? Right. Are y'all praying on this house? You gotta communicate because if you can't listen and you can't communicate, then you're in big trouble. And we got too many of our folk who can't listen and won't communicate. But Jesus says, the Bible says that the man says, I took him to your disciples. He said, but if you can, he tells Jesus, if you can do something, if you can do something. Uh, Jesus said, Hand him up if I can. Because right. I've got evidence yeah. that I can. Yeah. Question is, yeah. can you believe? Yeah. And, 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 and if you're thinking about bringing your issue yeah. and bringing your problem, right. it's not about if Jesus can do something about it. Yeah. Jesus has a resume that he can. Yeah. Jesus has a resume that he's able. Yeah. Amen. The man on the on a, on a Genesaret shore on the other side of the lake of Genesaret, the Bible says that this man had 2,000 uh, demons in him. And Jesus said, come out of the man. And the demons came out and jumped into the swine. Come on, somebody. Then the swine went up the cliff and, 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 and killed themselves on the rocks. And Jesus said, look, I got a resume that I can. That I can do whatever I put my heart and my mind to do. Yes. And I'm talking to somebody right here. You don't have to question whether Jesus can handle your problem. Yes. But the question is, can you believe yes. that he can handle it? Yes. Are y'all praying with me? Yes. Well, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, Jesus, Jesus says that you can believe all things are possible. Yes. But look what the man said. He said, he said, look, I, I believe. Yes. That's why I come to church. I, yes. I believe. I, that's why I brought my son to you, because I believe. Uh, uh, that's why I serve in ministry, because
because I believe. That's why, that's why I listen to the message on Sunday, because I believe. I even say amen when I hear something that I know is in the Bible because I believe. That's why I sing the songs, because I believe. That's why I praise his name, because I believe. He said, but I do believe, but there is still in me some unbelief. And so he said, help me with that part of me that can't believe and that won't believe. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible. And then the scripture says, he speaks to the spirit of deaf and dumb spirit. Jesus says, come out of him. And the Bible said, he came out of him. Come on, somebody. I, he, he, he put up a fight, but it came out. He caused some more trouble, but it came out. He created a commotion, but it came out. Because Jesus is able to handle whatever you bring him. Y'all gonna hear me in a minute. He, the Bible says that he, it was about his faith. Because Jesus wants our faith to participate with his power to bring about change and a dynamic change in our circumstances. Are y'all praying with me? The man said, I believe, but help my unbelief. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes God will bless other folk in order to help us with our belief. The Bible says that the man said, I got a problem. I do believe, but I got some unbelief. Jesus said, come out of the boy. And the spirit came out. And so the man still had a problem. But the Bible says Jesus helped his son's problem so that he could help his belief problem. And that's what God will do. Oftentimes, he will bless other folk around us so that he can help us develop our faith. He helped the boy with his demon so he could help his daddy develop his faith. He helped the boy with deliverance so he could help his daddy with his belief. Come on, somebody. And if you want, if you look around and open your eyes, you'll see that God is blessing a whole lot of folk around you. All you have to do is understand that if he can do it for them, he can do it for you. And so every time somebody calls me and says, Pastor, the Lord really blessed me. I get encouraged and my faith is developed because I see once again that God has the ability to do what he said and what he promised he would do. Yeah, I believe. But help my unbelief. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because Jesus has got your blessing. And he has got the development. And he has got the fix for your problem in his circumstance. Yes, and all you got to do is put your trust and your faith in him. I'm going I'm to take my seat. Uh, I've already been too long. Longer than I wanted to be. But I got to leave this one last illustration with you before I take my seat. Well, help us to understand that Jesus is able to handle whatever we need. And whatever we bring to him, Jesus can handle it. Are y'all praying with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus spoke to the, the spirit uh, of this boy. Uh, and the spirit came out and Jesus delivered him. And he did it to develop the man's faith. Sometimes, sometimes, uh, what we see in, in the lives of others will be a blessing in our own faith development. How you mean? Well, I've seen some, some illustrations of some things going on around me. Uh, I said some folks who've been blessed at my house. Amen. Who, who have been blessed at my house and they have some, some technological gadgets amen, that I have been looking at with a little bit of envy. Come on, somebody. There's folks in my house who have iPhones. Y'all know what iPhones is? iPhones, that's, the, that, that's a phone that has intelligence. It has, it has capabilities to do some things that a regular phone can't do. Huh? They got an iPhone. I ain't, they ain't got no iPhone. I, I, I'm glad to have a smartphone. That's one of the things about the benefit of an iPhone, the blessings of somebody else kind of helped me with this minute, with this, with this sermon. I was looking at the iPhone. I said, man, maybe I need to consider getting an iPhone because I had some trouble with some smartphones. All right. I've had some trouble and some experience with my phone. You see, my, my problem is I try to keep phones so long right. that after a while, the technology has gone past my phone. Yes, and, and the last smartphone I had, the smartphone, the battery died, died. Not just, you know, Jesus, Jesus the Bible says that Jesus, God told uh, uh, Adam, the day you eat of this 
fruit, you, you will surely die. And what, that, what he was saying was, it's die, die. Not just one die. It's not just physical death, but you're going to die spiritually. My mom died, die. It died spiritually. So I didn't, when I went to get a battery for the phone, and the people said, we don't make that no more. I said, you don't understand. All the information that I have, all my points, all my schedule, all my contacts, all of that is in this phone. You can't, you can't just leave me with no phone. You gotta have something to help me so I can get all my stuff out of this phone. They said, no, we can't help you die. You, you held it too long, you kept it too long. And so I said, well, wow. And so I, I, I'm facing the same problem all over again because I didn't get smart like the rest of my family and went and got an iPhone, I went and got another smartphone. And so now I'm in the same predicament, but I've been thinking about this. I don't want to lose my stuff again. And so I've been looking at the iPhone, and the iPhone was made by Apple. Y'all already knew that. I just found that out. iPhone is made by Apple. And Apple makes the iPhone. And what Apple does is they do something unique. They don't just depend on you to keep your information in your phone. They have an iCloud. Y'all gonna get this in a minute. There's an iCloud. And what happens in the iCloud, all of your stuff can be stored in the iCloud. So even if your iPhone gives out and your iPhone dies, you still have access to the cloud where you can get all your stuff back. Oh, you missed it. You missed your shot. You ain't shot. I know why you ain't shot because you think Apple made the iCloud. But Apple didn't make this cloud. I'm talking about your appointments and your contacts. Y'all don't hear me. Uh, I'm talking about all of your spiritual stuff. All of your spiritual promises. All of your spiritual blessings has been backed up in the cloud. And it's not the eye cloud, but it is the glory of God. That's what the Bible says. That the cloud came down on the Mount of Transfiguration. And the disciples who were there saw the glory of God. Thank <laughs> you.